Hey, I'm Steven and I make games. Or I try to at least. However, looking back I've come to realize that pretty much all of the games I've made so far have been 2D platformers, which doesn't exactly make for a very diverse portfolio. So this week I decided to change that. This week I wanted to learn how to make 3D games. And then, being a fan of doing dumb things, I thought it would be a fun idea to challenge myself to do it all in 7 days. Yeah, it went about as well as you'd expect. Let's get into it. We'll start at day 0. Not because I'm zero indexing, but because I'm straight up not counting it, because nothing really happened. And that's because day zero was spent researching. Because quite frankly, I had no idea where to even start, there were just so many options and ways I could have approached this, ranging from creating my own game engine to using tools like Unity. However, after a bit of googling, I quickly decided that I would do the game engine instead of writing my own, because what even is this? So eventually, I managed to narrow my choices down to three different game engines, Unreal Engine, Godot, and Unity. These are all very capable game engines, but ultimately I decided on Unity for the following reasons. It's powerful and can do a lot of things, its scripting language is C Sharp, which I already know, and most importantly, it has a massive community, which means there's a lot of tutorials and a lot of code I can copy from Stack Overflow. And so with that out of the way, I got to it. Pretty much all of day one was spent learning the basics. I did some research on how Unity worked and followed a tutorial from Brackeeds on how to make a basic Unity game, where you play as a cube sliding down a long cube and avoiding wide cubes. And a couple hours later I had my first functioning Unity game. Pretty exciting stuff. Well the fact that I had just made my first game was exciting at least. The game itself, not so much. And so I did my best to fix that by replacing all the obstacles with some guy named Eric I downloaded off the internet. Personally I think it was a massive success and I'm waiting on my game of the year award. But with that I felt satisfied with my progress for the day so I decided to hit the stack and get some sleep. Day 2 was filled with just as much excitement as day 1. In fact it was probably even better as that was the day I managed to get ragdolls working. Now personally I'm of the belief that ragdolls are one of the best things to happen to video games. Ever since I was an infant I would play games like Grand Theft Auto and dreamed of the day that I too could create my very own vehicular manslaughter simulator. So obviously, making a ragdoll was very high in the priority list of what to learn. And on day 2 I did exactly that. First I started off simple and tried to get just a basic ragdoll working. I downloaded some random model off the internet and put it through the built-in Unity ragdoll generator, and it was a massive success. I now had a ragdoll character that would bend and flop in a very entertaining manner. I then spent the next hour throwing various objects at it. But after a while that got a little boring, so I started looking online for more things to mercilessly beat with primitive shapes, when I came to the shocking realization that there just weren't very many good for Unity models on the internet. And so I decided that in order to fully master Unity, I also had to master making models for Unity, and for that I had to learn 3D modeling. So after a bit more googling, I decided that the best way for me to make models for Unity was to use Blender, which is a powerful, widely used, and most importantly, free 3D modeling tool. And so I hopped back onto Google and started learning how to use it. And a couple hours later I had successfully modeled my very own ragdoll man. And also a Glock. And by then it was getting pretty late so I wrapped things up for the day. Day 3 was pretty epic. I messed around with ragdolls a bit more and managed to set up a player controlled active ragdoll thing, which is basically a ragdoll that can be controlled by animations and stuff. It took a bit of time to implement but eventually I got a really jank but entertaining active ragdoll working. And then of course I spent an hour jumping on things. However, this got old after a while so I decided to try making an actual game using what I had learned so far. I decided on making a first person shooter because my creativity knows no bounds, so I created a new project, set up a player, added some enemies, and oh wait there's no animations. Now this was obviously a big problem because as funny as this is, it just isn't very immersive, so I set off to fix that and tried to learn how to animate. So I hopped back into Blender, fired up some tutorials, and got to it. It was a little tricky at first, but eventually I was able to animate the model I had created earlier and made a sick reload animation. An even sicker reload animation. And also this. And after creating that monstrosity, I lost all faith in myself and decided to call it quits for the day. Eventually, day 4 rolled around and I somehow managed to force myself to keep working on the challenge. Day 4 was actually pretty productive and I managed to complete the basic gameplay for the FPS game I had started the day before. I modeled some new hands for the player, made some animations, set up an active ragdoll system for the enemies, because ragdolls, set up a shooting system and learned how to use particles and line renderers and stuff, and implemented some basic gameplay. 
It looked kinda bad and was a little jank, but it still exceeded my expectations, so I was pretty happy with it. And a couple hours later, day 5 rolled around. On day 5, I pretty much just worked on the FPS game some more. I did some reading up on post-processing and pretty much grabbed every single effect, because on this channel we only accept the best of graphics. I also went and replaced the bullet line thing with a lightning particle system, which I initially thought would look cool but ended up kinda bad. However, I was too lazy to remove it, so it's here now. Then I added a couple new mechanics like sliding, which functions similarly to sliding in games like Titanfall and Warframe, except that in my version you speed up a ton when sliding because... um... I don't really know why, actually. Then I added punching, which basically, well, punches things. I made this do a ton of knockback on enemies, and also made it temporarily disable the joints and put them back into pure ragdoll mode, which allowed for some pretty epic combos. And so that was pretty cool. But things got a bit boring after a while, because while these ragdoll guys are entertaining, they don't make for very good conversation. So I decided to make the game multiplayer. I did some research, watched some tutorials, and after a few hours was able to convert the game to multiplayer. I then forced my friend to play and absolutely destroyed him because I'm just that good at video games. The next day I was feeling pretty good about things. The FPS game I had made had turned out far better than I thought it would and I really wanted to keep working on it. However, it was day 6 already which meant I only had around 2 days left, so I decided to try learning something new. So I started a new project and messed around with Unity's terrain editor, and then made a nice relaxing forest walking simulator. Except I didn't find it all that immersive, as the player was just a cylinder thing, which is not what actual people look like, at least that I know of. So I decided to give the player an actual body to really emulate the walking experience. So I took the human model from earlier, animated it, and slapped it onto the player. And everything seemed to be going well until I noticed this. Yeah, the player animations I made for flat ground in this terrain is dummy thick, so it doesn't match up very well. So I began thinking up ways to fix this and after a while came up with two feasible solutions. One way was to use the active ragdoll system I had implemented earlier. That way the legs would be affected by physics and would be moved by the terrain. Except that ragdolls, while fun, aren't the most reliable and can produce some pretty silly results, which while good for sillier games, didn't fit the serious, emotional, story-driven walking game that I was going for. So that leaves us with the second option, inverse kinematics. Basically, inverse kinematics is a way to calculate how to get the endpoint of a limb to a certain position by rotating the bones in the limb using some mass and programming. And this turned out to be exactly what we needed for our legs. By doing something like a ray cast downwards and finding the position of the ground relative to the leg, we can then use inverse kinematics to set the leg to move there. And so I got to it. I did some research and after some time was able to set up a basic robot arm thing that I could control. Basically, it takes this ball here as a target and tries to move the end of the arm to it. And it worked pretty well, so I started implementing it onto a moving body. I first took a basic cube, attached two legs to it, and added some code to balance the cube and to put the feet on the ground. This worked pretty well while the cube was standing, but while moving, well, it isn't very immersive. So I got to work on fixing that. I first made some modifications to the inverse kinematic system, where the limb would stick to the ground instead of follow the body. Then I made a check so that if the current limb position is too far from the body, it steps towards the body and sticks again. After a whole lot of time, I got it working pretty well and I'm quite happy with it. However, a walking cube was still a little boring for my tastes, so I made a robot body, attached it to the cube, and made a couple... improvements. So yeah, I made... well, a mistake. This was a mistake. Anyways, after creating that... thing, I decided to finally apply inverse kinematics to the player. This actually turned out to be a lot simpler than the walking cube and the thing we don't talk about, as the animations were already in place. All I had to do was add a check to see if the legs were underground and then use inverse kinematics to move them upwards. I think it turned out fairly well, however there is a slight bit of clipping on larger slopes. But it's pretty minor and not very noticeable, so I just left it. And then just for fun I added a couple more creatures, like this one-legged boy, this pink tentacle thing, a tall boy, and the Boston Dynamics robot dog. Oh yeah, I also added kicking. And with that ends day 6. And finally day 7 came around. Now by day 7, I felt like I had a pretty solid grasp on Unity, so I decided that, like at the end of any learning experience, I should make a thesis project. You know, my magnum opus, my Mona Lisa, the result of me putting everything I've learned so far to use. However, I got a little sidetracked and, um, didn't. It was going well at first, right, and I was setting up a new project when suddenly I had a brilliant idea that I just couldn't ignore. I would make a VR game. 
I mean, just imagine the jank ragdolls and dumb shenanigans possible in virtual reality. And it just so happened that I had recently gotten my hands on an Oculus Rift S, so I got right to it. I did a bit of googling, and a while later I managed to set up my first VR game. I then took the creatures from the forest game and the gun from the shooter, improved them a little, and bam. VR game, baby. I then added a few extra things like allowing enemies to be grabbed, because I mean, just look at this. And yeah, that's been my experience with Unity so far. It's been interesting, but I had fun and I'm excited to make more dumb things in Unity in the future. But now the big question, did I succeed in the challenge? Personally, I think I did. The goal after all was to make a 3D game, not a good one. And I did make a game. And yeah, I think I'm gonna end it here, but before I do, make sure to hit like and sub so you don't miss my next video, creating the world's first sentient artificial intelligence in one week. Until then, thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.